You boys be quiet down there! Welcome back. I'm Neo Alec. Today we're going to be RGB modding my Toshiba 32A33 CRT television. This TV already has composite, S-video, and component inputs, but I'll be adding an input for a native RGB signal. Now, I've owned this TV since I bought it new in 2004. It used to be my primary set for watching TV and gaming. It survived many moves and storage over the years, and as such, it's quite scratched up. You can also see that the ends of many of the input jacks have come off over the years. This is due to removing cables that were too tight. The jacks don't seem to have been built to the highest standard. No matter, all of the inputs still work with or without the metal ends. I've considered getting rid of this TV and swapping it out for a Sony Wega. However, last year it was discovered that this TV is very easily modded for RGB, so since that revelation, I've kept it around with the plan of finally doing this mod. What you're seeing right now is a signal from my RGB to component converter box. This box takes the console's native RGB via a SCART connector and converts it to the component YPBPR standard. It provides a very decent quality signal compatible with this TV's best input, provided that you replace the AC adapter that comes with this converter at least. For most people, this component signal is going to be more than good enough. These old TVs can be dangerous to work on, and if you don't have the know-how, then the difference between the component signal and a native RGB signal is not going to be worth the hassle in my opinion. The main reason I'm doing this mod is to cut out one stage of analog conversion to hopefully make it just slightly sharper and more color accurate. The converter also seems to add a slight amount of noise to the picture, even with the better AC adapter. We'll see how it turns out when we're done. Of course, you can always buy a professional RGB monitor, as many gamers have done, if you can find one or have the cash, but you won't find an RGB monitor at this size. This screen is 32 inches. And for me at least, the extra sharp pixels with black space between them of a professional RGB monitor don't resemble what I grew up with. I didn't come up with this mod. The credit goes to Bratwurst from several gaming forums. Bratwurst was kind enough to help me through this process when I got stuck and provided the moral support to help me see it to the end. Bratwurst doesn't get all the credit. This TV RGB mod thread on the Shmups forum is where most TV modders learn the process of RGB modding in general. If you've seen other RGB mods online, it's very likely that the person got their information from this thread. Lastly, don't use this video as an example when working on your own projects at home. I'm very bad at soldering, so if you work on your own TV, you do so at your own risk. Well, let's start by getting this TV open. It's not at all difficult. The back of the TV has 9 screws that are easily removed with a standard Phillips head screwdriver. Before working on any CRT, it's very important that you discharge it to remove any dangerous voltage. Of course, I can't actually speak to whether or not the charge stored by a CRT is potentially lethal, but true or not, I'd still rather not get a shock. It's easy enough to discharge, so there's no reason not to do it. There are professional tools for the job, but you can always just wrap a wire around a screwdriver like I've done and attach the other end to the TV's metal frame. Don't forget to remove all jewelry. Please forgive the oven mitt. I'm wearing a rubber grip glove underneath. This is not a professional operation. Now, hopefully you can hear the spark. Yes, I did flinch, but this was my first time discharging this thing. I had to discharge it several more times later in the process while troubleshooting, so it soon became old hat. The mod itself is actually not that complicated for this TV. The main signal processing chip on a TV is commonly known as the jungle chip. The reason this mod is so simple is that this TV's jungle chip already has unused pins for red, green, and blue on pins 3 through 5. RGB mods for other TVs usually work by hijacking the TV's on-screen display in one way or another. But for this TV, we don't even need to do that. Plus, the beauty of this mod is that the TV's on-screen display will still work, so you'll still be able to see the volume control and menus while running in RGB mode. Pin 6 of the jungle chip is what tells it to activate RGB mode. If you break the TV's circuit to pin 6 and feed the chip 2.1 volts or higher, it will switch into RGB mode. And if you totally ground pin 6, then it will be in its normal mode, where we can use the TV's composite, S-video, and component inputs. 
Per Bratwurst's instructions, what we're going to do is add a single pole double throw switch, which will allow us to toggle between the TV's original inputs and RGB mode. We're going to derive 3 volts from one of the TV's voltage regulators and connect that to one end of our switch. This will give us the voltage needed to feed into pin 6 and put the TV into RGB mode. When the switch is flipped, it will restore the original circuit, grounding pin 6, allowing us to use the TV's original inputs. I still want to be able to use the TV's component input for Xbox and PS2, as well as the S-Video for Atari 7800. This switch will allow me to do that. I'm going to be adding a SCART input to this TV for the RGB signal. I got this female SCART socket from Retro Gaming Cables, but this one available from Hong Kong on eBay is better quality. This one was cheap, but I found out about it too late and it didn't get here on time while I was working on the mod, so I didn't use it. I could have used RCA jacks or BNC connectors, but all of my RGB cables for the Framemeister and OSSC are SCART, so this just makes sense for me. The drawback is that SCART connectors can be fragile and fussy, but probably not as fragile as you may have been led to believe. If you've seen my NES modding video, then you know my wife is going to be cutting a hole out of the TV's rear input panel for the SCART connector using a Dremel tool. It's not the neatest job we've done, but this is an old scratched up TV, and it's on the back, so it gets the job done. I'll also need to drill a hole for the toggle switch. On the back of the SCART connector, I've added a string of hot glue to each row of pins. I know I'll get attacked for using hot glue again, but these pins really have a tendency to pop out of their position in the plastic when wired up, so the glue helps hold the pins in place. I'll wire pins 7, 11, and 15 of the SCART connector for RGB. Each of these three signals is also tied to ground through a 75 ohm resistor. The wires will also go through 104 caps before entering the jungle. SCART pin 20 is SYNC. We don't even have to wire SYNC directly to the jungle chip. You can connect SYNC to the composite jack on input 1 or the green component jack on input 2. Keep in mind that if you use input 1, then RGB won't work while you have an S-Video cable connected to the TV. Here's an important point that will save you a lot of headaches that I ran into. Don't forget to wire all ground pins of the SCART connector to the TV's common ground, especially pin 18 for SYNC. Doing this wrong shouldn't break anything, but I wasn't able to get a stable RGB picture until I wired ground correctly. You want ground of the TV and the game console to be shared to avoid any possible ground noise in the picture. As you're probably aware, the SCART connector also carries the console's audio, so for systems that don't have a dedicated audio output, you have to get audio from the SCART cable. I always use an external stereo system rather than the TV's built-in speakers for sound, so I need a way to get audio from the SCART connector out to my stereo receiver. Don't bother with audio breakout connectors like this one. They are total garbage and won't provide a reliable connection. So I wired the audio from the SCART input directly to the TV's input jacks. Now I can connect the stereo to the AV output jacks on the TV, or I can just use the TV speakers. Time to put everything back together. I didn't show this during this assembly, but the TV's main board sits on top of this plastic caddy, which I had to remove to access the pins for the input and output jacks, so I had to put all of that back together. See all that stuff in there? That's why your robot never worked. Well, here's the finished project. I had to adjust the brightness and color levels a bit in the TV's service menu, which can be accessed using the TV's original remote. Even after adjusting in the menu, I'm sure the geometry around the edges of the screen isn't perfect, but such is the nature of a CRT. The screen is also somewhat off-center, it's too far left. I was able to correct this to a degree in the service menu, but some work remains to be done. Bratwurst has a couple of ideas for how to fix that on both of our TVs. I'm very happy with the native RGB picture quality I'm getting from this consumer set. Even with the higher quality AC adapter, the RGB to component converter was adding a little bit of noise to the screen, and that's gone now. There's no way you're going to be able to appreciate the difference on camera, even with these photos I snapped, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. It looks better. I'm just going to demonstrate the switch on the back. This is RGB right now, and then when I flip the switch, this is now the composite input. Well, this was by no means a comprehensive guide for this mod. I just wanted to give an overview of what this process entails and what to expect. 
There are full instructions for the mod in the description box below. Well, now that I'm done, it's time to play a game and have a beer. Please like, comment, and subscribe to Basement Brothers, and I'll see you next time.